Welcome to Women's Footy. Thanks to NAB. I'm your host today, Bryony Dawson, and I am joined by Melbourne Demons superstar, Libby Birch. How are you, mate? Good. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> If you'd like to follow us on our socials, we'd love you to do so. You can jump on Instagram and Twitter and follow us at a Women's Footy AFL. All right, Liv, let's take a look at the round four results so far. Do we so have to? Far. <laughs> yeah, I think we're just, we're just going to touch on it just for a little bit. Uh, you headed over to Adelaide uh, this weekend and uh, couldn't get up over the Crows. They were absolutely phenomenal yesterday with Aaron Phillips, three goals, 17 disposals. It was a clinical performance by Adelaide. And uh, the Lions just managed to hold on against a, a Geelong fight uh, late in the game yesterday. And we'll check out the Thursday and Friday results as well. The Dockers smashing the pies. Uh, and the Giants also a really, really great win over the Bulldogs. Yeah, absolutely. It was a great response by the Giants after a really sloppy game last week. All right, it's now time to get into our news headlines for Nilex. Experts in watering. So we'll go first to the Adelaide Melbourne <laughs> game. Uh, you keep going back to this, Franny. <laughs> really, I want to get your thoughts, feelings, and emotions yeah. on this. It was uh, it was vintage Phillips uh, yesterday, wasn't it? Yeah, she was amazing. She's a phenomenal athlete. Three goals, 17 disposals. She's there when it matters. She's at the drop of the ball. She's an incredibly smart footballer. And she just makes something out of nothing. And it's incredibly hard to play against. And you got matched up on her a few times, Lib. Talk us through that. Yeah, so she plays a really interesting role for Adelaide. She rolls through the middle and then all of a sudden she's up forward. And so it's a really complex way as a, de as a defender to try and find your matchup. Uh, because they play quite a switch in, switch out midfield forward role. And they really hit you with that forward pressure early, didn't they? Yeah, absolutely. Their tackle pressure inside 50 particularly was enormous. I think it was 23 to 26, 20, 23 uh, inside 50 tackles, which is enormous. And as you can see here, they were just brutal with their tackles. When they got you, you weren't going anywhere. The, yeah, it was commented on yesterday that it was a really hard, fierce game out there. Yeah, absolutely. I'm definitely bruised and battered this morning, but credit to them. They took it to us and they were phenomenal. And like, as you can see here, they set up their, their pressure sets up their back line. And you can see here by Sarah Allen and, and their defenders taking intercept marks. That's what their game is and that's what they've shaped over the last five years. And they won that contested possession uh, contest by 20 as well. So that, they're really putting the pressure on. Yeah, and that's something that as Melbourne Demons we really pride ourselves on. So we're, we were extremely disappointed that we lost that contested possession. But it just shows the likes of Anne Hatchard and Ebony Marinoff. They're so consistent yeah. with their ball winning ability and it really sets up Adelaide. Uh, and the Ds, just, just the last few weeks as well, have been a little bit slow to get started mm. as well. Are you guys starting to address that? Yeah, we've been really disappointed with our starts particularly. We've finished off games really well, yeah. uh, you know, often kicking three or four or five, six goals in the last quarter. So, And, and yesterday was a, a test to that as well. We kicked three in the last. So it's, it's a case of getting there too late, I think, for us. And that's something that we need to, to go back to the drawing board on and, and work through over the next couple of rounds, definitely. All right, well, let's move on to the uh, Geelong game now. Chloe Shear... She's a really, <laughs> she went out there and was like, I'm going to kick a few goals today. Absolutely. She has been a terrific asset for Geelong. Uh, some more experience in that forward line, but she's an Adelaide product, so she plays like that. She's yeah. ruthless. She's got, ex she's extremely talented by foot, as you can see here, and just a great finisher, but unfortunately, obviously missed that last important goal. Yeah, and this is something I wanted to talk to you about, maybe a little bit controversial. <laughs> But, you know, the way that the league is improving and, and the way they're playing now, 15 metres out, slight angle, she's got to kick that, you know. Is it still a great game if she's not going to kick that winning goal? I think it is a still a great game, Bryony. I think it's just a disappointing uh, a finish. You know, that, that goal definitely could have got them the win. And as you can see here, she's she was absolutely devastated. And I yeah. feel as a player, I understand what that feels like to, to feel like the, the win is on your shoulders. Yeah. But it definitely wasn't. There was often, I know that the coach would have been talking to Geelong about, there was so many more opportunities throughout that game that Geelong could have got a hold 
uh, on that match. So it was just unfortunate that she missed that goal. But definitely, I think we're getting to the stage now in the competition where that performance is and that feedback is blunt. Yeah. Uh, and let's talk about Brisbane. They did. They they got held on to that scrappy game uh, by two points. Do you think them playing the two games in five days? was a huge part of that. Did they just run out of legs? Yeah, absolutely. It's never happened before in women's footy over the past couple of seasons. To have two games in, in five days is enormous. And plus, they've just come off the back of nearly everyone getting COVID. And we know some of the effects, the health effects that are coming from that, particularly with fatigue and um, breathing abilities. So I think that it's, it's really... Uh, a testament to their character that they've been able to push through that and just bank the win. Sometimes it doesn't have to be pretty. And I think Brisbane's shown that over the last few rounds with a couple of the injury setbacks they've, that they've had. And so you don't think that they need to be worried yet about this sort of start to the year? No, definitely not. I think there's just been a few unfortunate setbacks. You know, we know we saw Kate Luckins go down, Dakota Davidson went down early uh, as well, and, and Collingwood, unfortunately, with that suspected ACL again, which is absolutely devastating. Yeah. But I think they've just been thrown with a bit of a storm, and, you know, they're, they're the reigning premiers. Yeah. So you can never doubt the reigning premiers. <laughs> yeah. They will always come back at some point. So I think, yeah, we've got to trust in, in, in what they've been doing over the last few seasons because it's been consistent. Never doubt the reigning premiers <laughs> by Libby Birch. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, well, let's get on to the Giants and uh, Doggies game. Nicola Barr booting three goals. Oh, Outstanding. Three goals, ten disposals. She was absolutely terrific there. A soccer off the ground. But interesting from Alan McConnell. He dropped he dropped a few players, but also he moved Louise Stevenson and Nicole Barr up forward, which paid absolute dividends for him after what was a really disappointing performance against North Melbourne last week for the Giants. Yeah. And, yeah, as you said, Stevenson uh, kicked the two goals as well. Um, great for them being moved from forward to the back. You really had to sort of move the magnets around to try and make it work yesterday. Yeah, absolutely. And over the uh, first couple of rounds particularly, there was this interesting stat that Cora Stoughton uh, kicked over half their goals this season. So that meant that they were really struggling for for more people to help out and kick goals. And if Cora wasn't scoring, then they weren't winning. So I think that that just shows that, you know, those players like Nick Barr, Stevenson, were able to step up and they've got more options. They can't just rely on one player. And the Doggies, I guess, are suffering from a, an opposite thing to Brisbane. They hadn't played in 20 days uh, after all the health and safety protocols. Uh, do you think that that sort of, you know, sort of rusted their game a little bit? Oh, absolutely. It, it would be a shocking uh, thing for their momentum. Uh, playing against the Melbourne Demons in that first round and then being super sick, all of them nearly, and then having to travel and, and after 20 days, which is tough enough to travel. Uh, having had COVID, I just think we have to go a little bit easy on the Bulldogs for their start to the year. They've, again, been thrown a really terrible sword. It's been rough, hasn't it's it? Been it's been very rough. rough. It's been very <laughs> rough. And I think, you know, on all the stats for that game, they definitely should have won. They were just uh, inaccurate in front of goal. And that maybe comes down to fatigue and not having had played a game in 20 days. Yeah, because they did have uh, their inside 50 count was 33 to 21 mm. and did have four more scoring shots on yep. goal as well. I uh, just want to touch on quickly... Um, Hanin Zrika uh, chose not to wear the pride jumper uh, for this round. Can I get your thoughts on that? Yeah, I just think that it's, it's obviously a very complex decision and there's a lot of factors that are playing. And as you can see here, she uh, posted on her Instagram page. And I think that the most important thing is that she's supported by the AFL and she's also supported by her teammates and her coach because ultimately there are, you know, these complex decisions that we don't often realise the enormity of behind the scenes. Yeah, and speaking of that, um, Alan McConnell had this to say after the game. Yeah, it, well, difficult, yes, but perhaps even more um, interesting is complex. You know, it's it's just not simple. Um, and uh, yep. um, as I said to Hanane, you know, it's um, we can we can have um, similar opinions, different opinions, um, but um, they'll never they'll never um, break the bond that we have for one another and that she has with our with our team and her teammates. And um, uh, I'm very comfortable and confident that that's all intact. 
Yeah, it's a really interesting point there, Lib. You know, there's not much that can break a bond of teammates. What, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think it's, it's all about relationships and we have got such a close... It's almost like a second family. Your club's a second family and your teammates are your sisters. And I think, you know, anything like this, it, it has to be discussed as a family, yeah. as it would at, at yeah. home almost. And I think there looks like there was... She joined uh, the, the team song at the end. So I think it just shows the support and, and yeah. the ability for the Giants to, yeah, really cater for everyone's decisions. Yeah, and I think also as, as a, a, a member of the LGBTIQ plus community myself and, and a lot of women are within the AFLW, we kind of got bigger things to worry yeah. about than whether one player who we know and who we love yeah. is going to wear a jumper or not. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's move on to Fremantle versus Collingwood. They absolutely <laughs> pumped them. <laughs> they absolutely did. And I, I know that you have a different opinion. <laughs> but I think... Fremantle and Adelaide are the top two sides at the moment and I don't think there's much between them. The reason why I say that is because Fremantle's pressure, as you can see here, their tackle pressure is outstanding and their forward 50 tackle pressure is even better at 26 inside 50 tackles, which is, you know, it's very, very similar to Adelaide at the moment and they've been super consistent over the past five seasons as well and they've got some amazing players. So I think that uh, they've really, really started their home and away season fantastically. And they did keep Collingwood to their lowest score ever. Oh, absolutely. And I think that, you know, they're missing uh, Ashley Sharp and Sabrina Duffy, who are key forward. They were key forwards last year for them, kicking, you know, one to two goals a game, which is incredible that they've been able to sort of reshuffle that forward line and still have the impact in front of goal. And do you think that Collingwood now are sort of after losing Bree Davey... Mm. Are they due for a bit of a, a steep decline now as the as the season goes on? Yeah, I think they've too been dealt a, a pretty harsh sword early on and probably more an emotional battle for yeah. them because Brie Davy is such a soul, uh, you know, she's the soul of their team and, yeah. and a, a real leader and she's their hardball contested winner. And so I think it's going to be a matter of them working what their new style is going to be over yeah. the next couple of weeks. And that may take some time. But I think we need to understand that, that is a huge out. Yeah. And it's not a huge out from a leadership point of view, but also from a football point of view. It's, it's huge. And, you know, we've got Britt Benici and, and Lambert uh, that are usually outside players that are having yeah. to play inside yeah. uh, at the ball. So I think, you know, the, the midfield and the forward connections are really struggling at the moment. Yeah, and that, that was going to be my next mm. question to you. Do you think there is a bit of a disconnect between the, the mid and the forward at the moment? Yeah, and, and I think you can see that by the way that they, the Collingwood's defence is their strongest line with Ruby Slicer and Livingston. Uh, they've been, they were able to rebound almost 85% of the inside 50s from Fremantle. So they were getting it out. It's a matter of the midfielders then, you know, having the offensive process to get it to their forwards. Yeah. And Chloe Malloy only had two disposals. So I think yeah. it's a matter of thinking about, hey, well, let's get Chloe Malloy on the ball, change it up a bit. They just need some electricity in there to get things moving. Um, now, I know you're, you're very passionate about Frio <laughs> being uh, one of the better undefeated teams. I just personally, I think Adelaide are just a, a, a classier team, the, the, the way they play. I think... Frio, we might find uh, they're a little bit scrappy, and I think when they come up against uh, Adelaide in round eight, I well, think we it will is. see, won't we? <laughs> <laughs> we'll make sure you, we have you back on the yeah. show on that. Sunday. I am, I am, I am back. Round eight. <laughs> you love it, absolutely love it. All right, uh, that was all of our news headlines. Thanks to Nilex Recycled Water Hoses. Water like a Nilex expert available at Bunnings. We are going to take a very short break now, folks, but we've got Anne Hatchard coming up after the break. Welcome back to Women's Footy for NAB, supporting footballers from NAB, AFL, Auskick to the big time. Well, we have a Crows player and two-time All-Australian, Anne Hatchard, on the line. How are you, Anne? 
Yeah, I'm really good, thank you. Um, <laughs> hi, Anne. <laughs> Liv, did you want to say hello? Yes, yeah, or... hi, Anne. <laughs> you guys need a moment? <laughs> we do. We can have it off air. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and obviously an absolutely huge game from you yesterday, 29 possessions. How are you feeling? Yep, feeling very sore this morning. Um, you know, highly contested game, so a few big hits. So, yep, definitely feeling it. You, uh, we were talking just off air before, but I know that you've been it's, been, it's been noted in the media that you've been battling a bit of a foot injury yourself. Uh, can you talk us through what the preparation's been like for each game? Because I know that as a, as a prime athlete like yourself, it would be very frustrating to have an injury like this. So can you talk us through that a bit? Yeah, it is quite frustrating. So I've had um, this foot issue during pre-season pre-season as well so it's been a bit ongoing um it flares up every now and then so um yeah each week we just have to try and manage it and yeah going into each game even up to this this game um it was the call in the warm-up see how it, see how it pulls up so um was happy that I was feeling pretty good before the game and that I could um get out there on the field with with my team yeah, well, it certainly didn't affect you too much <laughs> with, with 29 disposals. And the thing that really stands out for me for Adelaide is their ability to, you know, you, your team is just an, a massive pressure team. And it's been consistent over the past five seasons. And that's what's put you in good stead for, for premierships and for grand final opportunities. But has that been something that has been another focus for you this year? Just uh, for me, it was just that inside 50 tackle count was huge. Uh, talk us through that. Yeah, definitely. Pressure's been huge for us um, this season. We went into pre-season. We want to be the most uncomfortable team to play against. So um, we just want to pressure, 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 um, especially with playing against Melbourne. Um, we knew you're very uncontested side. You like to get the ball through the corridor. So we, need, we, we knew we needed to bring the pressure to stop that. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, the thing that, again, stood out to me was the way that you and Ed play together is like, you know, it's a symphony, yeah. really. Oh, it's a symphony. It's a symphony. <laughs> and I know that you've been playing for a long time together, but it, it just seems like there's this connection uh, between you two on, on where you are on the ground and how to connect between you both. And I think you had something like 55 disposals between both of you and, and an enormous amount of clearances. So, you know, what's that relationship like with you and Eb and, and yeah, how has that develop, developed over the years? Yeah, so I've been playing with her since, since the first season. So, um, and then in the midfield together for about three years. So we've really built a good connection in there. Um, you know, I can go off to the right, she can go off to the left, and we just, we'll just keep running. We're relentless, we'll just keep going. So um, we just seem to find each other out in the field, which is great. And, you know, hopefully we can just keep building on that connection in the midfield. If I may add someone else into that mm. symphony, yes. you know, just to really bring it home. <laughs> Uh, Rochelle Martin had a team high, nine tackles and a goal. She is just an absolute superstar. I love watching her the last couple of years. How important has she been uh, to the Crows' pressure game? Yeah, she's been super important um, to our pressure game. She brings it every single every single game. You know, she's always going to bring it. And um, she just is a tackling machine. She just doesn't look back. She's just awesome and I just watch her in awe. I wish that I was as tough as her. She is pretty hard. She's very, very hard sure. at the ball. Well, I also I want to talk about how good Erin Phillips was yesterday because she is our nomination for the AFLPA MVP of the week thanks to Snaffle. You can cast your vote on the AFLPA MVP of the week at aflpa.com.au. And Erin obviously is, is a champion of our game and she consistently produces amazing performances and, and she was at, she's the all-time leading goal kicker across the last five seasons uh, with 46 goals now Huge. on her way to 50. Yeah. Uh, what's it like, as, uh, what's Erin like as a leader and as a person but also, you know, as a footballer on the field? Uh, it's just incredible to play against her but what about with her? Yeah, it's amazing to be able to step out onto the field with her. Um, I grew up watching her play basketball and just absolutely idolised her and hoped one day I'd play basketball with her. But 
to be able to step out on the footy field with her is just it's just amazing. She's such yeah, as you said, such a good leader, person and athlete and look I every day I just aspire to be half as good as her. Another player that I want to throw into the symphony again Please, we are musical is... today here at Women's Footy. <laughs> is Jones and she's had this tremendous jump in not only her ability on field but through that midfield as well. What have you seen in Jones over the preseason? Because I think she's she's definitely been up forward a fair bit in previous seasons but it just seems like she's got a new life in her. Yeah, her fitness levels have gone through the roof. She can just run, run, run for days now. She has been really um, crucial for us on the wing. She provides not only um, offence, but her defensive pressure as well is just insane. Well, I uh, this is, wasn't how I was going to plan my Sunday morning, <laughs> <laughs> talking to an opponent <laughs> that we lost to. But it's it's been so lovely to talk to you. Yeah, it's been great. Thanks so much, Anne. Uh, we really appreciate you joining us. And you don't go away empty-handed either. All guests on Women's Footy will receive a Samsonite luggage package, innovative travel and business solutions, a Spinal Ease pillow. The best pillow in the world is at spinalease.com.au and you also get a $50 McCafe gift card. Try the Aussie Angus Burger at Macca's today. Well, we are going to go to a, another break, folks, but uh, stay tuned because Nicola Barr is going to join us after the break. Welcome back to a women's footy for NAB, supporting footballers from NAB, AFL Auskick to the big time. Lib, I'm going to throw it over to you now for the analyzer, thanks to Pillar Products, who have you covered inside and out. Well, today we're going through the Giants, and it was a big, big sound on the weekend for them, getting their, another win on the board. Uh, it was terrific for them that they were able to respond after last week against North Melbourne, who yeah. they would have been tremendously disappointed with their efforts across the board. They struggled to score, but I really loved the ability for them to just to change the magnets around and get some scoring opportunities. Nick Barr, a backliner, kicked three goals. Louise yeah. Stevenson, two goals. And Jess Doyle was terrific as well. Now, I just want to talk you through this play here. Now, it was an inside 50 play. Their composure was absolutely an outstanding. And Al Ali Dalloway, who's got the ball here, chooses not to blaze the footy. Now, you're 25 metres out, it'd be easy to go for a goal here. But the smarts and the composure here just to hit up a lead was absolutely outstanding. And Nick Barr here, oh, Louise Stevenson, sorry, taking that mark and kicking a goal was just terrific. And we've got another play here, but just a tr tremendous improvement from last week to this week. Louise Stevenson doesn't blaze away and kicks to her partner in crime, Nick Barr, for another goal. And I think that that shows Mark's inside 50 tremendously go towards more scoring opportunities and better scoring opportunities. So I think that was obviously something that they worked on throughout the week and that change up was terrific. And I think we have uh, Nicola Barr on the line now. Nick, what a huge effort yesterday, taken off the back line and uh, put into the board and bagging three goals, mate. Yeah, I know. Not quite sure um, how that ended up happening. But, um, no, great, great to get a win on Friday night at Henson Park. And um, I think, you know, we obviously had a fair few outs with the AFL's health and, health and safety protocols. Um, and I guess a few key names out as well for us. So I'm really, really stoked with our ability to, I guess, come out and compete really hard. And our kids, that our kids club, we like to refer to them mm -hmm. as, um, really stepped up and, and played a great role. Now, Nick, it was your first goal after 34 games, if I'm correct. What was the feeling like? You didn't just kick one, you kicked three. <laughs> it, was it was everyone's dream. Now, there were some outstanding goals as well. How did it feel for you to be up forward and have such an influence for the team? Yeah, not going to lie, it was pretty fun. I was pretty excited <laughs> after the first one. Um, look, I've been moved up forward this year. I played a lot of wing last year and I guess the year before that as well. So um, have sort of moved on from the back line and unfortunately hadn't hit the scoreboard yet. 
And I think um, playing the new role up forward's been really exciting. It's been a big learning curve. I'm, I'm definitely learning um, a lot along the way. And, you know, I've got some great teammates who are really helping me out there. Um, but, no, really enjoying the challenge of the new role. I'm finding the half forward position uh, probably the toughest one on the field at the moment. I'm, I'm used to seeing the game in front of me. So um, it's been a bit of a challenge, but uh, I'm really enjoying it. And Louise Stevens was absolutely fantastic as well. Fellow defender and, and booted two alongside your three. Yeah, absolutely. Lou, Lou's had, um, you know, an interesting couple of years. She's been in the back line predominantly, as, as you guys mentioned, and I think she struggled to find a little bit of form at times, but she's such a skillful footballer. And, you know, like, look at that kick. How can you not put her in the forward line? I was really, really glad to have her up there. And she just looks like really relaxed on Friday night. And I think, you know, like, you know, how can you not after kicking two goals as well? I'm really happy for her. Nick, I'm really interested in what was talked about throughout the week, particularly after last week's game. Everyone would say, even yourself, that it wasn't a great game for the Giants against North Melbourne, and particularly around the effort that we saw the team not making, I guess, across the field. What was your thoughts, uh, I guess, across the week and what was discussed to bring back such a response? Yeah, look, I think, to, to be honest, um, I think... I wouldn't really necessarily question our effort. I think our effort's there, but we were probably getting frustrated with each other a little bit um, during the game early on and, and, and probably weren't bringing as much pressure as we normally would like to. One of our real strengths as a team is is playing contested football and bringing a lot of pressure at the source. And I think, you know, we knew that North Melbourne was has a really nice um, inside-outside balance and, and we probably didn't quite nail um, I guess, our preparation going into the game. And, you know, obviously you guys played um, the Crows last night and have a, had a great last quarter. And I think that's what we did in the last bit as well. So we were glad we could do that. And I think for us, the real focus was, right, how do we start from the get-go like we did in the last quarter? And it was similar against Freo the week before. So a big focus for, for us was, I guess, just contested football, winning our one-on-ones and, and being really aggressive at the source from the get-go. And you're sitting just outside the top six now. What's the belief like in within the team that you guys can make the finals this year for the first time? Oh, look, I think we've had a really great preparation um, over the preseason. And I think, you know, the game on the weekend for us, it's definitely one of my favourite wins as a, as a club. And I know that a lot of people at the club are saying that as well because of, I guess, you know, we could have gone in with so many excuses as to why we wouldn't have played good football and, everything like that. So so for us to get a win like that with, you know, the youngest kids and the most experienced AFLW players playing against the Western Bulldogs, um, you know, a, a shorter week, there was lots of things probably not going our way. So to turn up like we did, I think just, just gives you such strong belief and um, I'm really looking forward to this week. And one player that I wanted to just mention with you, Nick Barr, was Jess Doyle. We saw her step out onto the ground first time last weekend and, and really was, I guess, a shining light for the Giants with that uh, amazing mark and goal. And she managed to kick another one on the weekend. What is, what's Jess Doyle like and, and what's, you know, she's obviously such a ta talented young kid. Can you tell us a little bit about her? Yeah, we love Doyle. She is just full of energy um, and she just loves her footy. Like, she's so excited to be there every day. Um, I remember pre-season, every time she'd turn up, she'd just go, oh, I'm so excited to train. And I was like, it just brings so much energy to the group. And, yeah. and she's a star. I think there was a highlight that was played of Lou Stevenson kicking. It was either her first or second goal. Um, but it was actually set up by Doily, who, if you look at the vision, Doily's going back with the flight. She turns around. She can see that the contact's coming and she just throws herself at it and it creates an opportunity for Lou to kick the goal. So not only is she really skillful, you know, when she's kicking a goal, but she just puts herself in, in tough positions and she's a really selfless player. We love having her in the group. Well, Nicola, thanks so much for joining us today. We know you've got a session to get to now, so we'll let you go. Thanks a lot. Thanks so much, guys. Have a great day. Thanks, Nick. OK, up next, we are going to have the uh, Brisbane captain, uh, Brianna Conan, up after the break. Welcome back to Women's Footy for NAB. Uh, we're joined on the line now by Brisbane Lions captain, uh, Brie Conan. Brie, are you there? Yeah. Thanks Thank, for having me. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, you must be pretty happy to have secured your uh, your second win in five days. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, from going playing obviously one game over two weeks and then having two games in four days, yeah, it's been a hectic week. Um, very grateful for the seven day turnaround this week. How's the how's the body holding up? Yeah, it's okay. Um, not too bad considering. Uh, I think being semi-professional makes the whole four-day turnaround a that little bit more challenging. But, yeah, we pulled through all right. I'd be really interested, and I'm sure the viewers would be really interested to know, I know that COVID, unfortunately, went through your group. Did you, did you get sick? And what was the recovery been like after COVID? Yeah, fortunately enough, I was one of the lucky ones to not get um, COVID. But, yeah, a large majority of our group, obviously got affected and are still really struggling coming back. So yeah, credit to our medical team. They've done a really amazing job in being able to manage, especially with a four day turnaround. Yeah, the girls have done an incredible job to be able to even play the two games. So yeah. And you go. And Geelong did did come in late there in that fourth quarter. Um, it, it kind of felt like you ran out of legs a little bit. Um, can you talk us through that? And, and do you think that the the COVID situation did have something to play in that and you had two games in five days. Yeah, no, it was definitely challenging. Um, and, yeah, we did run out of steam towards the end there, but I think we sort of didn't give ourselves any sort of chance as well. We sort of get, kept them in it for majority of the game, not um, capitalising on some of our opportunities. So, yeah, it was a bit scary towards the end, but I'm very, very uh, happy that we got the win. Yeah, absolutely. And I think what, just give us a, an idea of what those four days look like in between games, because did you, did you have a training session? Did you just do recovery and then back up with another game? What did it look like? Uh, yeah, so we had um, a rest day the following day after Tuesday, and then we had gym and captain's run yeah, straight wow. into the game <laughs> on Saturday. So yeah, very quick, very different. It was weird not to sort of have a main training session through the week. So yeah, it was a bit odd. And it must have been a huge boost having Dakota Davidson uh, back early from her injury. Yeah, absolutely. Um, her and Sophie Conway are sort of energisers for our team. So, yeah, it was really great to have them in and around the group. And obviously Dax finishing with a nice little goal. Uh, yeah, she was, she was good to have back. A great goal and an even greater goal celebration. I love it. <laughs> Always. Now, I, I know that we've been talking, you know, majoritively positive things and I, I, we hate to see this in the football world, but uh, Gabby Colvin, Collingwood, sorry, is that right? Yep. And yep. she went down with a suspected ACL. How is she going? I know that it just breaks the hearts of everyone that watches, yeah. but, yeah, we just wanted to make sure we checked in and, and, and see how she was going. Uh, yeah, obviously, first game back with us um it's the last thing you want to see uh we're just crossing our fingers and hoping that it's not what it looks like um yeah we'll wait till obviously everything confirms and we know what's going on yeah but i'm really feeling for gabby and we're really rallying behind her at the moment and how does that make you feel as a group when you see one of your players go down like that you know she's come back from a long stint after another injury uh, and you see her go down how do you how do you move on and and, and keep playing yeah, it's um, definitely challenging. If you find out a way, let us know because, yeah, mm. it just rattles mm. the whole group because, um, yeah, obviously we all really care for Gabby and, yeah, to try and move on and still keep playing footy, especially when it happens so early, is, yeah, really challenging. I guess we're playing for her in that instance. And yeah. have, have you had a chance to speak to her at all? Like, how is she, is she holding up? Um, yeah, early stages, she's all right she's in relatively obviously considering everything um good mindset uh but yeah it's yeah who knows what's going to happen in the next couple of weeks what comes out so hopefully just fingers crossed we can all still support her really well she's she's in great hands with our medical team so yeah we obviously were amazed at the performance of Brisbane last year and particularly in that grand final, it was a terrific win. How have you seen the first couple of rounds? Obviously, you've been dealt a little bit of a, a tough sword and a, a tough pill to swallow, really, with COVID, Kate Luckins, you know, a few injuries here and there. It's been a challenging start for the reigning, reigning premiers. How are, you seeing, how are you seeing it? 
yeah, I think um, like it was challenging for us last year as well. So it just gives our group a chance to show their resilience and how good we are as a team and how much depth we have in our squad at the moment. Um, so, yeah, it's not been easy. I wouldn't say it's the, the smoothest start to our, um, you know, um, retaining our premiership, hopefully. But, yeah, no, it's just been a hectic start to the season. And, yeah, fingers crossed we can sort of settle in and actually get some games played. We're just happy to be out on the deck again playing footy. And we saw Zimmerly with a uh, NAB Rising Star nomination for round three. Um, how's it been? How's our first year going? She's come out of the Brisbane Lions Academy. Yeah, I'm really proud of how far she's come since she started. She's had a lot of personal growth on and off the field. So, yeah, um, I was very happy to see her debut uh, on Tuesday and hopefully she can really start to find some consistency in her game and... Um, yeah, she's a live wire, so she's awesome to have out there. Emma Zilke, uh, obviously a past player, has come back and started coaching. I'm really interested to, to hear what, she's, what value she's added to the group from not only a, a player's point of view, but as a coach. Yeah, obviously she has a wealth of experience. So, um, yeah, it's awesome to have Zilks still sort of a part of our backline group. She's she was obviously a really important part of our whole group for a long time. So to have her still there and sort of even for me as a mentor to bounce ideas off and just check in with, um, yeah, she's been incredible. Bree, thanks so much for joining us today. It's been great to chat with you. No worries. Thanks, guys. All right, well, let's take a look at the AFLW Rising Star nominees from round three. Thanks to NAB, supporting footballers from NAB, AFL, Auskick to the big time. Welcome back to Women's Footy for NAB. We're here at the McCafe. Try a deluxe iced coffee at McCafe today. Well, let's take a look at the goal of the week for Underworks Serious About Sport. And it was a huge one for Gemma Houghton this week. Let's take a look at it. Outside of the boot oh. and snaps at probably around 35 metres. A terrific goal. She's had numerous of those throughout her career, but that has to top the lot. She is elite, isn't she? Oh, she's her, the speed and I guess the skill on her. She does it with ease. Yeah. It doesn't even look that hard, which means that is something that she's practised time and time again. Absolutely. Uh, so, Lib, I want to bring up something. You wrote an article uh, during the week for AFL Women's uh, about the fact that the AFL Women's uh, Best and Fairest does not have uh, a name mm. yet. It's just the BNF. Uh, what are your thoughts on it? Yeah, well, I think it was. it's time to have a discussion about it. Legacy and tradition in the women's game needs to start. We need to start putting some prints on paper on, on what we want to call this you know, the best award of our game, the yeah. most respected award of our game. And I came up with a few names and, and we've spoken about her a lot today, but Erin Phillips and another one, which I know that you've spoken to a, a fair bit over your time in, in women's footy, but Debbie Lee. Yeah. Uh, just 
She's been a pioneer of the women's game and really someone that's had so much history before AFL Women's a even huge, started. She created her own club, you know? Like, yeah. it's, it's, she's absolutely huge and, and such uh, a passionate person uh, about women's footy. Um, so are you think do you want a hybrid name? You want to hide the the Phillips Lee medal? Like, yeah, what are you I think thinking? that's I think that's got a really uh, nice ring to it. But I think it also in, it gives respect to the our past player Debbie Lee. She played over yeah. three hundred games. Huge in uh, you know in the VFLW league at that point, and. Erin Phillips, who is the shining light of, you know, since 2017, won numerous premierships, numerous bests on the grounds. Um, she's won the award herself. Yeah. Twice. 2017, 2019. And I think that that just gives respect, as I said, to, to both the past players and the future players, but also the administrators of our game that have pushed so hard to make this possible for us. And I yeah. think that that's really important to acknowledge. And do you think having uh, such a well-recognised name as well, like Erin Phillips, attached to it and someone who has won it as well yeah. is, is really important in naming? Yeah, absolutely. And, and we know she was the inaugural winner. Yeah. And look, that just, I think that just, that just speaks for itself. You know, the first person to win the best and fairest medal for AFL Women's in 2017 was Erin yeah. Phillips. And she has continued to be a champion of our game. Yeah. And, you know, there's numerous other names that we can think of. Lisa Hardiman yeah. uh, has also been another one. And, you know, I, I urge the, the audience to think about it. And if you have some names, you know, tweet us. Tweet talk, us. Talk, talk about it. Let's have the conversation because I, it, we are a community, yeah. as you know, and we, we want everyone to be involved in this decision. I think it, it's got to be a collective decision. Yep. All right. Could not agree more. The collective decision. Uh, we are going to take a look at today's games right after this break. Welcome back to Women's Footy for NAB. Let's take a look at the Sunday fixture. Lib, who do you like for this? Carlton versus North Melbourne at Icon Park. Definitely North for me. Oh, North. I'm going to go Carlton. <laughs> I'm going to go Carlton by three. And, and I reckon Richmond. Richmond? Yep. I'm going I'm to go the Suns. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, Liv, thanks so much for joining us today. Really appreciate you coming on the show. And that is all we have time for today on the first F back in 2022 of Women's Footy. We'll catch you next time. <laughs>